This is a Hot Pie Media Original. He's a professor at Yale for the better part of 30 years, teaching negotiation, innovation, strategy, and game theory. Now, I'm, I'm confused about the pizza analogy, a better way to divide the pie. Is that a, have you turned that into a book? I have. It's called Split the Pie. Okay, so Split the Pie. That's the All main right. idea. So let's let's do this. Um, before we get to the pie analogy, and you worked it in brilliantly, and I think it's really, really helpful for most people, um, and that is the average person goes about any negotiating situation, salary, whatever, whatever it is. You seem to be saying we have the wrong framework. Why is that? I think people don't appreciate what it is they're actually negotiating over. They come up with some large number and they think that's what the game is about. But in fact, the purpose of the negotiation is to create the value that the two parties can do through an agreement. And when they understand what it is they're really negotiating over, that'll change their conception of what's fair, of who has the power, and will make it much easier for them to reach an agreement. Okay, but... I sit down, what, again, whatever the situation, I think you're going to say it doesn't mm-hmm. matter. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it, it's all negotiations. But people would yeah. say, well, that, that's nice, Professor. That feels great. Um, but I need what I need. I want what I want. You can want whatever it is you want. That doesn't change what the negotiation is about. So uh, <laughs> uh, I may want a job with no, no teaching responsibility and no grading. That's not the, the deal I've got. So... Uh, the question is, what is it that you can create through the negotiation? And what is the other party working with you to create? And that's what the negotiation is about. You know, some of what I read, um, one, of the, one of the pieces was, in negotiations, give the other side what they want, which is sort of what you're talking mm-hmm. about now. Um, do most people just not care what the other side wants? Are they incapable of seeing what the other side wants? Actually, I think they want to go the other way. That is, they try and not give the other side what it is they want because they think that's a problem. My view is that if you give the other side what it is they want, then you can get what it is that you want. You want them to really want to make this deal happen. And by the way, for the same token, you want them to give what it is you want, which means you have to tell them what it is you want. A lot of people think negotiation is like being read your Miranda rights. Everything you say can and will be used against you. No, you have to answer questions to help them figure out what it is you want. Okay, if we're sitting in class, what is it you suggest, or how should people approach negotiating to get them out of that mindset? It sounds like you're saying that we just approach it and we're too close-minded with no awareness of the bigger picture. Is that what you're saying? And then how do you go about fixing that? Yeah. A lot of people start a negotiation by talking about price first, and I think that's a mistake. Better is to talk about what people's interests are. What is it we're hoping to achieve? Even better, in my view, is to start off the negotiation with a discussion of how it is we're going to negotiate. Talk about the framework for that. And so say, my goal in this negotiation is to create a large pie and to split it with you. Can we agree on that? John McClellan is the co-founder and creator of ATX Hot Sauce, now in all 50 states and several retail outlets as well. So what we're going to do today is we're going to let this social media rock star chef uh, walk us through four different sauces, and then I'll taste, and we'll tell everyone why they should buy. You can give the science behind yeah. these, and then I'll make the uh, the simple recommendation. Go to atxhotsauce.com. All right, so let's go. I don't so think anybody's go. heard the website yeah, I know. I know. You, Jeff, <laughs> but that is that. atxhotsauce.com. I'll say 345 right. times, atxhotsauce.com. So let's do it. Uh, I brought four flavors here, and we're going to test your palate today. Okay. And I only brought four because I didn't think you could handle five yeah. or six. Yes, Probably a enough. smart move. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so the first one we're going to try here is called Beat Heat. And just like the name implies, beets. it beet, it has beets in it. It's made with red Fresno peppers. Red Fresnos are uh, red peppers that are, uh, they're hotter than a jalapeno and a little bit less than a serrano. So not super hot here, uh, just a lot of good, really good flavor. So we're going to start All with right. this one and then we're going to move up the chain. Okay. I've had the beet heat, but okay. Yeah, we're going to try it though. We're gonna it, goes try well, it, it goes well with a cab. All right, Jeff's savoring beet I'll heat. even do it with you, so that should be all right. Now remember, it is hot sauce. Yeah. 
Oh, it is. <laughs> it's hot sauce. Trust me, man. Wait, that one, is that one hot to you? Um, no, no, no. A little. Yeah. The, yeah. the great thing with the fermentation process is you get a bunch of the flavor right up front. Yeah. And then the heat comes, but then it dissipates pretty quickly, especially with the red Fresnos. You know, this is not a very spicy uh, one, but it is um, a very tasty one. Goes on great on sandwiches. <laughs> Beet heat. Beet heat. B E E T. Heat. All right. Go to atxhotsauce.com. That's right. Now, you could try the humorous version, which is, hey, what do you say we each act like jerks, have a zero-sum <laughs> mindset, try and take advantage of the other side? And when the other side either might say yes to that, in which case you know who you're dealing with, or they say, no, that's not really what I want to do. And say, great, because I, I heard about this professor from Yale. He's got this split the pie thing. Let's try that approach. Okay. Um, you want to start with the pie analogies right now and walk us through it? I think it'll help so that people will... Stop walking away from abstraction and get into something that's a specific example. Do so you, we've got... Yeah, let me ask you something about the jerk, the jerk comment. Um, sure. Do you think people... Do people go... Do we approach it that I need to be a jerk, so I'm going to be a jerk? I mean, almost as if no matter what the scenario, I don't care if you're negotiating over a salary or a car <laughs> deal or a can of soup... He does, we do have this idea that I've got to go in and I've got to fight. So in other words, I'm going to go ahead and be a jerk. Yeah, I think people who are wonderfully empathetic, who are passionate about others, who are smart, throw all of their natural skills away and start acting like a jerk. And they do that because they think they need to to protect themselves or because that's how they've seen people negotiate in fiction and on screens. Yeah. Uh, so my first lesson when people say, how do you negotiate with jerks is, don't you be the jerk. Because I see people who are wonderful humans not acting that way when they start a negotiation. Okay. Connected to that is a lesson which I'll call fight fire with water. <laughs> As opposed to fight fire with fire, the smoking the bear. <laughs> line. Uh, and essentially when you see somebody else acting like a jerk, don't copy them. Try and help them get back to their good person okay do we need a role play here because i know people are thinking ah this again professor yale sound the theory sounds great man but what's the real practice of this so how do we how do we role play or use the pizza yeah well let's do the pizza first so okay. that people know what we're talking about here because a little it's it can get a little abstract sure so, so i have alice and bob who are negotiating over 12 slice pizza and i'm from new haven where pizza is really the name of the game. That's that's what this town is about. Yeah. Sally's and Pepe's. And wait, is that the name uh, of the pizza places? Those are two pizza places that are famous for their clam pizza. So Texas is barbecue. Okay. New Haven is clam pizza. Got it. Uh, lines out the door. And we also have to ask what will happen to Alice and Bob if they can't reach an agreement. And here I'm just making it up, but I'm going with Alice is going to get four slices and Bob is going to get two. So now the question is, with those as their backups, how should they divide the 12 slices? And the two most common answers are, people say, well, just do it six and six. That's fair. Or they say Alice is twice as strong as Bob because Alice is getting four and Bob is getting two. So we should divide up the 12 in a eight to four, a two to one ratio, the proportional division. And I think both of those answers are wrong. My view is the negotiation is really about the extra six slices they can get through an agreement. See, no agreement, they get four plus two or six. With an agreement, they can get 12. So getting those extra six slices is why they're having a negotiation. They're each equally needed to do it. If Alice says no, those six slices disappear. If Bob says no, they disappear. So you split the six, three and three, which means Alice gets her four plus three or seven, and Bob gets his two plus three or five. That's it. Thanks for listening. You can find more episodes and all of our other Hot Pie Media originals baked fresh daily at our home online at hotpiemedia.com, the Hot Pie Media YouTube channel, or wherever you listen to podcasts.